Hello and welcome to Always an Escrow. This is Serena Appel and please welcome my host, Colby Burchin. Hello, Serena. We are celebrating this season with David Yontif, who is the host of Behind the Velvet Rope. He is the charismatic host of a show that is unwrapping the world of Real Housewives, Bravo Liberties, and pop culture icons on the daily with episodes that air all the time. You can find him across all podcast episodes and YouTube. David, welcome to our festive show. Welcome back, right? My second time here. How are you guys? We are great. We are so excited you are here. Our audience demanded that you come back on, so we delivered. Thank you. I'm glad that I am what the people want here and always in the escrow podcast, so thank you guys. I think it's everyone's guilty pleasure, everything Bravo Liberty, and you are 100 Bravo everything. So I think people just really like relate to you and and everything you talk about. Well, I really appreciate that. That's a nice way to start this Friday, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so tell us BravoCon. First of all, were you New York City BravoCon or Las Vegas BravoCon? What did you prefer? Well, I did not go to Las Vegas BravoCon. You know... I don't need to go to BravoCon anymore. I know that's a controversial way to start. But, you know, so I went to the New York City BravoCon. It has nothing to do with Vegas. And it just, it's a really crazy experience. And look, I think BravoCon is amazing for all the fans that go, right? It's like, you get to see all these Bravo liberties up close. You get, you can have your picture. You go to, things happen at BravoCon. You know, like just, and this is no shade. It's just, it's not, it's not for me anymore. It's like, you come on my podcast, we we talk. I want to interview these people. I want to talk about it here. Everything that happens at BravoCon, you find out within minutes of it happening. So I have covered BravoCon extensively on my show But I feel like, you know, I feel like my audience tunes into me to kind of hear my thoughts on what happens. And so you can give your thoughts on what happens by being 3,000 miles away, not there. So, but I think it's a great thing and I'm not poo-pooing it for everyone that went. Okay. On recent episodes, you've been interviewing Julia Hart. You've had on, oh, well, of course you've had on Luann all the time, but then you really do get into the nitty gritty. What's happening on and off the screen? So let's get into it. What do you predict is going to show up when Sandoval arrives this season? And then can we also talk about Kyle and Mauricio just a little bit? Let's do it. Look, I think, I mean, I'm excited for the new season of Vanderpump Rules. I think that, I mean, I said this on my podcast from day one and nobody listened to me. I think, look, what goes up must come down and what is down must come up. Like Bravo liberties, people that watch Bravo love a good takedown. And then once you are there and you are at the lowest you can be, They love to kind of, it takes a while, takes a season or two. They love to build you back up. I mean, look at the season that Erica Jane is having on Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. I mean, this is the same Erica that people wanted canceled. Lots of people still want her canceled, but she's having a redemption season right now. She had to wait two seasons to get there. So I predict with Sandoval that people... The queen that they built up, Miss Ariana, I think everyone's going to start to kind of turn on Ariana. Like Dancing with the Stars. She has all these endorsement deals. She's made millions and millions and millions of dollars. I think people are going to slowly start to resent Ariana's success as this season goes on. And I think, look, we're not going to fire Tom Sandoval, right? So when we're not going to fire someone, like we love to hate people, right? But we don't want to hate, hate them. Like we hated Diana Jenkins on Beverly Hills and that didn't work. We love to hate Ramona Singer and that works. So I think Tom Sandoval is going to get a good edit. You know, he still did what he did, but they're going to start to give him this good sympathetic edit because we're not going to get rid of him. So I think Ariana's fall is coming and I think we're going to start to kind of build up Tom Sandoval this season. Yes. Okay. And now Kyle and Mauricio, we're seeing it all kind of like unravel on 
on the show and maybe it's all a setup. Maybe it's scripted though. It's unscripted. So what are we, what are we thinking is, is Kyle, is there more to Kyle and Mauricio that isn't, I will say Kyle looks hot. She does look hot. She's Kyle is looking good. Look, I think it's, I think it's real. I think that Kyle plays into it. Like when Mauricio is out and he's snuggling up to a mysterious blonde, all of a sudden she's out doing errands with Morgan Wade. So I think Kyle knows how to like use the media and use the paparazzi to get certain things. I do believe it's real. I think that they really are having problems. I do think Kyle and Morgan are just friends. So I believe it all, but I think that Kyle knows what she's doing when she goes out for a photo op with Morgan and knows when she's feeling it and needs to get some attention. I think it's helped Morgan. I mean, Morgan is touring now. I think it's helped Kyle, but I don't think it's, I don't think it's fake. Like I believe Kyle and Mauricio are really going through it. And I really think they will get divorced or stay together and live two separate lives. Mm, okay. So on this show, I want to try and give the audience because we're doing this holiday segment. And I thought, what better person than do the most memorable moments in Bravo history? So let's give the audience, we'll count it down. So David, uh, let's, how many do you have? I have 10 and I only focused on this year. I focused on like the Good. top 10 shocking things, moments of this particular year. Okay, drum roll number 10. Let's give it to them. Well, starting with number 10, is this whole, like, I'm not, I'm going to say Kyle and Mauricio, but I'm not, I place it low on the list. It still made the list because, look, I've heard rumors about Mauricio for years that he has some extracurricular affairs and activities. So the fact that, like, the couple that has all this money, they're both hot, they live in Beverly Hills. Like, I'm not shocked that they're going through this and might be getting a divorce. I'm shocked at the whole Morgan weight of it all. Like, I did not expect this from Kyle. Friends, not friends. I think Kyle is really going through it and, like, finding her voice for the first time ever. I think, you know, with her, her problems with Kathy and now she feels, like, kind of like, you know, like, once you're kind of, like, finding your voice, you kind of just keep going with it. So I think she kind of put Kathy at bay. And I think, so I'm, I'm not really shocked that they're having problems, but I'm shocked that like the Morgan weight of it all. And I mean, that's, I didn't expect that. So that's why it's on the list. It's not so high because I've heard things about Mauricio for years. And here we are. Okay. Number nine. Number nine to me is, you know, <sighs> Carl and Lindsay. I mean, Ooh. these are two friends I went on record of saying Carl and Lindsay are going to last forever. I really thought like, you know, you think about it. You're two friends. You get together. You know each other for seven years. Like I really thought out of all the Summer House couples, they would be the one to go the distance. Like what a great way for Lindsay to end. She's had such, you know, ups and downs. I really, so I actually, out of all the breakups this year, this one kind of shocks me more than almost any other breakup. I, I will say watching them on BravoCon, that that was tension. That was hard to watch. That was hard to watch. And it's real and it's not staged. Some people thought that was staged. So, I mean, that's my that's my number nine. Okay. Um, so, tell us what your thoughts are on Austin um, this season. I mean, Austin and Shep. It's like... <sighs> Just it's it's enough, guys. You're in your 40s. I actually think Austin will settle down before Chef settles down. But I just think Austin is so <sighs> look, I think this is a great season of Southern Charm. I think it's one of the best seasons in like years. I think Southern Charm works this season because it's like Vanderpump. Like these really are people, other than these newbies who have come out of nowhere, this really is people that we've known forever right so it's like they really have history i mean austin is just look i give him credit he's going to therapy and he's trying to like figure things out so i haven't written off austin off yet but it's kind of the same old same old like just break the pattern listen if craig could be in a relationship so can you austin so can you okay 
Uh, let's give our audience number eight. Number eight to me is, I, I'm shocked. I'm not shocked at the scandal. I'm really not. I mean, Ariana and Tom are not married. They don't have children. We've seen one of them wants a child. One of them doesn't. One of them believes it. So the fact that they have broken off, I don't understand why people are so shocked. I'm not even shocked that Tom cheated. I'm not even shocked. That, I'm shocked why this is on the list. I'm shocked at how big the scandal is. That is what shocks me. I mean, I don't get it. Everyone is broken up in this. What is the... Why? Yes, I know it's a friend and she slept with Ariane. I mean, she slept with her best friends, man. But I don't understand why it's such a big deal. And that is why, that is what shocks me. That is why this is on the list at number eight. Love it. People can't get enough of that one. People, I mean, we're still talking about it, right? So like, I mean, it is what it is. I mean, I'm kind of over it. I'm kind of bored of Colin Mauricio as well, but it still makes the list at number eight. I know Serena's wondering, do you miss Lisa Rinna? Yeah, I do. <laughs> I mean, what is going on this season on Beverly Hills? It's a little boring. Yeah. Yeah. It's a little boring. I, I love it. It's still like probably my favorite franchise, but it's, I do miss Lisa Rinna. I think the show is fine without her. I mean, we have Bethany is gone and Vanderpump, like it always goes on, but Rina, I think she had to go. I get it, but I do miss her. Yes. Okay. Number seven. You know, the thing about this like list of shocking things is like in hindsight, nothing is shocking, right? But you have to remember when it happened. I feel that Taylor Armstrong being on Real Housewives of Orange County is shocking. I mean, they've talked about like Cynthia Bailey on Beverly Hills, and they've talked about these crossovers. And the network has really traditionally been against, you know, someone going from one franchise because it is almost like jumping the shark, right? It's almost like everyone talks about Dorinda in New Jersey. It would be like Dorinda from New York in New Jersey. It's really hard to like assimilate into a new cast and not be thought of as your like original role. So I think the fact that for the first time ever, we have someone that jumped a franchise has done it well and seems like, like, can we even remember Taylor on Beverly Hills? She's so orange County. So that, if you really think about it is a shocking thing and it opens the door for so many more possibilities. Yeah, my, you know, it's funny you should say that. My wife and I um, noticed that uh, Phaedra Parks switched to Married with Medicine, uh, Married to Medicine. Actually, she made a great transition. We've been watching that, and she's she's on it this year. I think even better than being a housewife. She's on it. Married to Medicine is highly rated, but it doesn't have the buzz housewives does. I think that's great, a great, brilliant decision also. She's doing great. She hasn't missed a beat. She kind of comes in as a big fish. So I am I agree with you. Okay, number six. Number six to me is just because I didn't think she had it in her. But, you know, we have this whole reality reckoning, which is happening. And, you know, there's all this talk, Bethany, Bethany, Bethany. But then the Vanity Fair article comes out. And you the real reality reckoning is happening with, like, Ebony and Leah. And so Leah's my number six because... You know, Leah says she's planning to sue Bravo. I mean, who would have thought that Leah McSweeney had this in her? And she says she's never going to settle. And so I just think for all the talk about Bethany and the reality reckoning, behind closed doors, Leah's really the one who's like, oh, okay. So that to me, I didn't see that coming. Everyone's asked me what I thought of the Vanity Fair article. And like, I knew a lot of it. Nothing really shocked me in it. But the Leah part of it shocked me because I had no idea Leah was even involved in this. And so I think Leah suing is not my number six. What do you think, which franchise should disappear? Well, I mean, a lot. You know, I don't think it should disappear. But if Atlanta continues like this, I mean, I think Atlanta needs a real reboot. That is my real I think if one franchise should disappear completely, I would say Dubai. I mean, it's just not really on anyone's. Is there any buzz about Dubai, really? Yeah, not really. That, that is true. But I think Atlanta last season for the second year in a row was horrible. 
And although I do not think the OC is great, I think that has a lot of problems. I think Atlanta needs a complete, complete reboot. I would fire everyone and start over. I think Kenya Moore is great. She is the shade assassin. She is brilliant. I just don't think it works to keep certain people. They tried that with New York and it didn't work. So I think the Atlanta needs a complete reboot. I do like Candy and Kenya. I think they're two strongest players if they want to keep two. But I think they should. But I think Dubai could go and nobody would really care. Okay. <laughs> Number five. Number five, in line with the Vanity Fair article. I mean, I can't believe it has finally happened. Ramona is finally canceled. It's over. Oh. It's, it's done. I mean, she's, Douglas Elliman has fired her. We're going to show Roni legacy. Ramona's not coming back to Bravo, everybody. She's 66. Oh, it's truly over. It's done. She will never be back on Bravo after this next season. Anyone that doesn't think that, that's no where more, we no, are. No more turtle time. No more turtle time. Let's enjoy her on Roni Legacy. It's over. And she already lost her job. I mean, she wasn't going to be part of Legacy. When, you know, the only reason she's part of Legacy is because Jill Zarin turned it down because she was offered so little money. So we already fired Ramona. That's when she went and called the show a loser legacy. Then we needed her and we brought her back. I mean, it's, it, it's over. It's truly over. There will never be Ramona Singer on our TV screens again. So I'm shocked that she's finally canceled. That shocks me. Number four. Number four. I mean, now we are into, now we're into some top Number four to me <laughs> Nitty is, gritty. Come on, give it to into us. into some nitty gritty. Number four, I mean, I'm friends with this person. I knew this for months before it was announced, but it's like corporate America. The person that you think is going to take the job the most is the person you offer the least amount of money to. I am shocked. I'm still shocked in retrospect that Jill Zarin turned down Roni Legacy. That's all true. They went, they made their offers. Jill wanted favored nations where everyone gets the same. Luann got the most, right? Because she's, and then Sonny got second because she's been there. And then, but Jill, in a valid point, Jill was like, you offered Kelly Ben Simone more money than me? They did. It's a true story. And the, you understand because they said, they probably sat around a room and said, well, Jill's desperate. She's desperate. I mean, that was her reputation. She's desperate to be back on the show. Let's offer Jill Zarin the least amount of money. Well, Jill showed all of you because she turned down your least amount of money and didn't take the damn, damn job. And the only reason Ramona was hired back was because of Jill. So I never would have thought in a million years, Jill Zarin would say no to returning to any form of Roni. She's making a ton of money with her candles and her business with Allie. So good for Jill. I love that. But I'm shocked even now saying it that she actually turned this money down. Here, uh, I'll, I'll do a change of uh, outfit for you, Dave. Hold on. Oh, no. Do you have some Jill Zarin gear on? Let's see this. I mean, real men do watch Bravo, right? I mean, he is showing his real men watch Bravo T-shirt. Yeah. I, I say all the time when I do my show, I'm like, are there any straight men out there listening to me on the Behind the Velvet Rope Seven Day a Week podcast? Every time I say that, my like DMs fill up. I'm straight, on straight. I'm like, what straight man is listening to me? But thank you, I love my straight male listeners. They uh, they do exist because I know a lot of husbands. You know, they watch TV with their wives. The wives want to watch this and. You know what? It takes you away from your BS life that something's going on and all this is going on on Bravo. And it just it's it's comedic humor. It is. I agree. And people and I think Salt Lake is having a great season. Number three. Number three to me is, you know, we don't really know what happened. I don't think we're ever going to see the franchise. Now people are saying we're never going to see it. I said from the first minute it happened, we're never going to see it. This whole thing with Brandy and Caroline Manzo. We still don't know what happened, but I just think the fact, I mean, I heard Caroline suing, so I don't know. But this whole thing that, you know, Caroline goes home, Brandy's let go. They're saying that, like, you know, there was sexual impropriety in a bathroom it's kind of shocking that we're at this point, right? I mean, that's like real life stuff. So that I think there's so much more there than we even know. I mean, I don't think we're going to see the franchise. So that's my number three. 
Number two is, you know, I always predict what's going to happen and who's going to lose their job. Who would have seen this coming? Number two, a Roni reboot. I mean, think about it when this was announced. The whole cast is let go. I sat around. I was like Ramona and Luann. Those are the two that are keeping their jobs. We're getting rid of Ebony. We're getting rid of Leah. We're getting rid of Sonia. She's become too much of a liability to the network from her drinking. I really thought we were keeping Ramona and Luann. We were going to have a whole new cast around them. Then they announced that we're letting everybody go. I mean, first time in history. So in retrospect, it may not seem shocking anymore now that we've watched season 14, but it really is shocking when it happens. So yeah, Roni reboot and everyone losing their jobs for the first time in history, that is shocking to me. And what do you think about this new group, this new New York City group? <sighs> A lot of people love it. I just really can't. I don't not like it. I'm really down the middle of the road with this. I'm not sure how I feel. I'm really not sure. I think the reunion was more interesting than the whole season. I think they finally found a voice in the reunion. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about this. It's lighter, but it's not so funny. It's not, t I don't know. I'm, I'm really conflicted. Well, we have some polished talent on that show this year, right? And people that are really, you know, savvy business women. Um, this is not their first time on TV or in the spotlight. So they're really, you know, protecting themselves too, I feel like. Maybe that's totally. that part of it. I think that's a lot of it. Have you tried Uba's hot sauce? I have not. Have you? <laughs> no. <laughs> I haven't even thought of trying Ova's hot sauce. I love hot sauce. <laughs> um, so our audience wants to know, do you miss Jen Shaw? Not even a little bit. Not Poor even. Jen Shaw. Not, you know, I think this is the best year of Salt Lake ever. I think Jen was so over the top. I mean, the first season was great too. I know I'm, I'm really, I'm okay with Jen where she is for real. My my wife is loving Meredith Meredith when she gets a little little tipsy. Her other voice that comes out. It's great. <laughs> These are all characters. Everyone there is really strong. Yes, Meredith has another voice. Yeah. Lisa Barlow loses it. She goes from zero to hundred in a matter of a minute. It's great. It's great. Yeah. Do you like the new cast member? I don't mind Monica. I know she's really controversial, but for someone, I think Monica is a great housewife because I don't think she cares. Like, I think you could say anything about her. I think she loves being there. So that makes a good housewife. Like, she's not going to start editing herself for the camera. Yeah, I do. Okay, and before we say number one, tell us your thoughts on Mary Crosby. I mean, that's so, just a... So happy to have her back. <laughs> so happy. That's just a mess. <laughs> I mean, it's a hot mess. <laughs> ordering McDonald's and a limo while you just sit the whole thing out is just brilliant. <laughs> I am a huge Mary person. Okay, give it to our audience. Number one. I mean, the reality reckoning. I mean, this is like, what is going on? I mean, no, I'm not shocked that, you know, they force you to drink and they false imprisonment and they say you can't leave you have to finish filming the scene and i've interviewed every housewife basically on my podcast and i've heard it all so the toxicity of bravo in the production companies does not shock me i'm shocked that we're here with bethany and reality reckoning and the vanity fair article and the heads of nbc speaking out and andy Cohn sweating it and then the whole article comes out and it's like a nothing burger I'm shocked that we are here and it's not, I'm not sure where this is going or if it's really going to have any effect at all, but I'm shocked that we even have a name to it. And I mean, I think Bethany does not know what to do these days with her life. I mean, she's all over the place herself. Yeah. The reality reckoning as a whole just shocks me. Well, there you go, our audience. You you wanted it. We delivered David Yontif on a silver platter. He gave it to you. And so tell the audience what's new, what's coming up behind the velvet rope. I mean, I've got a lot of housewife interviews coming up really from every franchise. I just interviewed someone speaking of Dubai, Dubai yesterday. I have a lot of Beverly Hills coming up. 
And it's not just interviews. I give my opinion on things as well. And just I break it all down like I did here today. So everyone should listen to Behind the Velvet Rope. It's every day now, seven days a week everywhere you find your podcast. And it's not all Bravo, but let's just face it. It's mostly Bravo. Thank you, David, for coming on our show. We can't stop watching, listening. Everybody, please tune in. Behind the Velvet Rope. I'll come back anytime you guys want. Thank you so much. And thank you to your audience for wanting me back. Happy holidays to you guys too. 